The imminent flooding of several states along the Benue River from Lake Nyos in Cameroon necessitated the federal government of Nigeria to initiate the construction of the Kachimbila Dam across the Katsinala River in Taraba State. In 2007, the Federal Ministry of Water Resources appointed SCC Nigeria Limited to construct the dam in the northeastern part of the country. The preliminary design was for a dam designated to function as a buffer dam in case of failure of the natural embankment of Lake Nyos in Cameroon, which could generate an extreme flood, endangering human lives, properties, infrastructures, farmlands and livestock. But one and one now, who and she cut no man. Ruay na chikuwa. Banaru wa maya chika pinde yike chika kuwa na shikara. Ya chika harchan, na shuka masara, na shuka shinkapa. Today yike shi shinkapa baya mutu wa nguwa. Si Allah asa baya mutu wa na shi seetashi. To ik Allah doesn't answer mu kada. Ama masara kuwa kwa ya daya. Bansa mu ba. And scientifically, the United Nations sort of won Nigeria. That we have to be ready. So one of the steps taken by the federal government is to construct dams. When there was a flooding in 2012, it was so devastating. So part of the remedy is to control this is to construct some dams along Benue. By the time we're able to do these dams, then completely the flooding will be controlled. The Kashimbila Multipurpose Dam, now under construction, is a composite structure approximately 1.6 kilometers long and 35 meters high with a reservoir capacity of 500 million cubic meters of water. It consists of a 150 meter long mass concrete gravity and controlled spillway, a clay core rock fill embankment, and outlet works fitted with twin 1.5 meter diameter pipes to supply irrigation and potable water, a 40 megawatt hydropower station and 60,000 cubic meters per day water treatment plant. Our experts on assessing the potential of the area realized that uh, we could do much more than just have a buffer dam. We could look at other potentials that will maximize in terms of uh, the quantity of water to be impounded in the reservoir, in terms of the amount of electricity that could be generated, in terms of uh, the agricultural potentials of the area, fisheries development, and also uh, tourism. Based on the preliminary design, the contractor mobilized to site within the year of award and work started in earnest. Surveys, geophysical and geotechnical investigations were carried out on site, while construction of access roads, batching and crushing plants, workshops and engineers' camps also commenced. However, between 2008 and 2010, work stopped due to inadequate funding, which led to a delay in the initial program of work. This created an opportunity to review and expand the scope of the project, based on a detailed feasibility study report for the hydropower plant, which showed that the capacity of the hydropower station could be increased from 6 to 40 megawatts. The new design altered the dam height from the initial 24.7 meters to 35 meters, thereby increasing the reservoir capacity from 200 million to 500 million cubic meters. Consequently, variation orders of civil, hydromechanical, and electrical supply of turbines were incorporated in a second review. This change in the hydropower component represents a 700% increase in capacity utilization of the dam. Now, in the course of final design, we find out that there's potential volume of water to take this. There's potential head to provide higher power requirements. So we say, why not? It is better to maximize this dam, such that we'll be able to also address the power need of the nation. 
without affecting the safety consideration for the dam. The design of both the dam and hydropower station were carried out in accordance with international best practice. It is designed with the highest engineering standards and design and with the safety standards. And we have design consultants, Oricon of South Africa. It is, it, is, it is really a masterpiece of engineering. Funding improved in 2010 when the transformation agenda of Good Luck Jonathan administration to resuscitate abandoned and uncompleted projects in the country came to the rescue. Work commenced again in full force with a new program of work in order to make up for the two-year delay. Manpower and material mobilization to site were increased as a 24 hours, seven days a week work schedule was maintained. Soil investigations and treatments were carried out to secure the dam's foundation. Earthwork activities of drilling, rock blasting and massive excavation were prominent especially at the diversion channel. Community relations were established to initiate compensation and relocation procedures for affected communities within the proposed reservoir area. To hold enough water for multi-purpose use and withstand the surge force of flood water from Lake Nyos, the embankment had to be anchored deeply and firmly to a secured foundation 25 meters beneath the ground. Grouton the rock foundation further reinforced the dam base. As soon as work resumed on site in 2010, the construction of the dam wall commenced on both sides of the river. Day after day, clay coal, rock fill and filter sand materials were hauled and compacted to specification. Work intensified progressively that by mid-2013, the impressive embankment structure on both sides was completed to their final level. When completed, the total embankment volume above the existing ground level will be in the order of 1 million cubic meters. Another critical structure of the dam is the spillway, designed to maintain the maximum reservoir capacity such that excess water flows over its oggy wear, saving the dam from overflowing its embankment. The spillway, along with other outlet structures, also ensures the safety of communities downstream in the event of flooding. Commencing in 2011, its gradual formation from blinding works for the foundation to casting various levels of platforms was a huge task. The entire spillway structure was built in alignment with a dam axis, lift by lift, in a record time of 24 months. This massive concrete structure is made up of about 85,000 cubic meters of concrete mix. Kashimbila, the host community, as some other rural areas in Nigeria, lacks electricity. However, completion of the hydropower station and transmission line will ensure steady electricity power supply. Uniquely located on the dam axis, works for the hydropower station started in July 2011. As soon as all the drawings and parts were available, massive reinforcement and concrete casting works intensified to meet up with the scheduled arrival on site and installation of the draft tubes for the turbines. Phase by phase and decks after decks, civil works progressed in readiness for electromechanical installation. As secondary civil work continues, gates, turbines and other electromechanical components are already on site. Construction works for the transmission line is expected to commence as soon as possible. The hydropower station was designed in accordance with the International Electromechanical Institution 
best industry standards to ensure that all interfaces and possible conflicts between the civil, mechanical, electrical, hydromechanical are avoided. The desire of government in providing portable drinking water to its citizens informed the decision of the Federal Ministry of Water Resources to include water supply components in redesigning the Kashambila multi-purpose dam. This development would reduce poverty, curb the long hours spent in search for potable water, as well as eradicate waterborne diseases. Where you provide potable water, there will be improved health. School children will be able to go to school rather than spend a lot of time going to fetch water from streams or elsewhere. There will be improved uh, maternal health because pregnant women will have access to clean water. And uh, people will also have time to do other gainful employment that is available. So the provision of that particular dam at that point and making it multipurpose is going to improve livelihoods of the people in those areas. Of the 71 kilometer water distribution pipeline required, about 50 kilometers of it has already been laid from the dam site, crossing rivers and swamps to Takum and Kashimbila. The construction of the pipeline that began in 2010 is near its completion. Substantial progress has been made in the development of the water treatment plant and reservoirs, which started since 2011. The treatment plant comprises chemical building, administrative block, store, chlorination chamber, wastewater recovery tank, clear water tank, filtration unit, clarifier and workshop. As at November 2013, the entire water supply scheme reached 55% completion with outstanding works, including construction of the balancing reservoir where treated water will be stored and then conveyed by gravity for distribution. Meanwhile, earth moving works for the pipe lane of treated water to Jatuaka is at preliminary stage. In preparation for the river diversion, the concrete discharge channel, culverts and connection bridge were completed on schedule. The 132 meter long bridge connects a large area of land that can now be developed and populated. Most of the civil works are about to be completed. What is going to delay us it is electromechanical installations. We faced a a series of delays in various components of the project which were beyond our power and control. Uh, luckily, we found an engineering solution still to divert the river on time by introducing a coffer dam at this area and isolating the working place from the flowing water and it will enable us to meet the target. On the 1st of April 2014, the river was diverted from its original course following the demolition of constructed coffer dams. This milestone event marked the final push towards the completion of the embankment across the riverbed. Residual water in the diverted riverbed was drained and the process of constructing the dam across the riverbed has begun with grouting. Diverting the river from its natural course allowed the construction engineers to work freely on the dry riverbed from foundation to final elevation of the embankment. During this period, the river is allowed to flow only through the diversion culverts. 
the level of work done on the Kashimbila Multipurpose Dam has increased considerably in spite of the challenges peculiar to projects of this magnitude. The Kajimbila Multipurpose Dam has progressed tremendously. The progress is very successful, very encouraging. We have completed the work on the dam itself, except the central portion. We have done diversion to complete the central portion of the dam. We have completed the, um, the spillway and the discharge channel. The hydropower, the electromechanical installations are going on. That's the turbines and the pumps and the generators are going on. They have been substantially completed. The water treatment plant is going on. They are, they are progressed. We have complete, almost completed the, the conveyance pipe from the site to Takum and Taraba. Irrigation, we have surveyed the irrigation area. We have um, demarcated the irrigable land. Major challenges were encountered as a result of inconsistent funding leading to delay in work schedule payments of compensation and consequently interruption in relocation of affected communities within the reservoir area. However, efforts have been made to ensure construction work continues while supplementary funds for the extension of work and satisfactory relocation exercise is facilitated. The President was very much interested in the implementation of this project as one of the national projects that can last for the next 200, 300 years to leave a legacy of this administration. Initially, before he came in, it was abandoned. Then he came in and then it was doing everything possible to make sure that fund is made available. According to the work plan, the reservoir area is to be cleared prior to impoundment of the dam. All existing structures and vegetation will be evacuated to maintain the reservoir's retention capacity and reduce the rate of siltation. To get the full value of the project, a 2,000 hectare irrigation scheme is scheduled to commence as soon as the dam is completed. The Kashimbila irrigation scheme would contribute immensely to the nation's food security and economic sustainability, as it is the case with Gurara, Hadejia Jamari, and Ikere Gorge irrigation schemes. Construction of the massive Kashimbila multipurpose dam project is strategic and employs specialists from all over the world in its design, manufacture, and supply of complicated components, management, supervision, coordination, and training of staff. The project also employs local staff as iron benders, carpenters, masons, laboratory technicians, welders, operators, surveyors, mechanics, and several engineers. Over 1,000 workers are directly involved in the project. Tapping into the spectacular and breathtaking tourism potential of the Kashimbila Dam location, an airstrip was incorporated in the project. Since its completion in mid-2013, access and mobility to the project and community has improved. The benefits are beginning to well, show up. Um, the airstrip is already functional, so for people who want to um, travel to Taraba um, with a lot more ease, they can fly uh, to that uh, airport. Uh, we already have certification from the NCAA, from NAMA, and also um, from FAN. And uh, it, it's uh, an airport that uh, we have been informed by the aviation authorities that uh, is already listed among the uh, world airport sites. Several other facilities and incentives are also in place to boost workers' morale and well-being. In addition, safety measures are enforced to avert any industrial accidents associated with construction activities of this magnitude. The local communities have also benefited from the ongoing development. From the inception or the construction of the dam, 
We have seen a lot of changes, people participating more on economic activities. It creates employment and many other things that we can say it really brought about positive impacts in this community. The benefit they draw from this, the construction of this dam. You see some of them build, or somebody who has stayed for more than 30 years without be building even a single room, now build up to five rooms. To sustain the momentum of the benefit and development, the project stakeholders ensure that implementation meets design specifications at every stage of the construction work. Commendably, the Kashimbila Multipurpose Dam has enjoyed high-level support from the Presidency and effective supervision by the Federal Ministry of Water Resources. At the moment, we are at about 85% completion. And we are hoping that by the fourth quarter of this year, 2014, that's by December, we would have completed the dam. Then other components will, will still be going on. So we are on course with, with respect to the schedule, completion of the project. You cannot just build and get out. And then in the next few years, the infrastructure will start collapsing. Definitely, it will be impossible to maintain it through the normal budget. So we'll get consultants to, to work out revenue generation and then whatever is made will be used to maintain these structures to standard. This is a major, major, major project which Mr. President has committed himself to finishing. Power to be generated is 40 megawatts and it will not only be used uh, in Taraba State, but Adamawa State will benefit from it, Benue State will benefit from it, and also Cross River State. And uh, with government emphasis on uh, agricultural transformation and uh, the fact that uh, these areas, the states that have listed, are also uh, agrarian states, uh, they, are, they engage in a lot of agricultural activities. The Ministry of uh, Industries, Trade and Investment is interested in developing an industrial park around the Kashimbila. Uh, again, that is going to also increase the opportunities available for our young people, for business uh, businesses to grow and also for people uh, to invest. We are working towards uh, completing the project by December. Sometimes in 2015, definitely most of the benefits of uh, this project uh, will become obvious. With this renewed will and determination, it is hoped that a timely completion of the Kashimbila multi-purpose project will ensure safety of lives and properties, balance the ecosystem and offer sustainable economic development to the region.